Good evening. Hey, hello, good evening, everybody. Hey, hello, Francisco. Welcome back. Mayra. Good evening. Good evening, Claudia. Oh, good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, Claudia. Good evening, hey, Mayra. Good evening, Miguel. Carla, welcome mm -hmm. back. Andrea Esmeralda, good to see you here. Remember to activate your camera. That's uh, better because we can interact uh, in, during the class. Okay, we can see each other. Uh, hello, Hiroki. Good to see you in the class. Hey, hello. How are you? So fine. Good to see you here. I can see that you are, you are putting into practice what we have uh, learned recently. Hello, Claudia. Hello, Carla. Good to see you in the class, Carla. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Okay, enjoy your meal. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> okay, so that's the way you say pro buen provecho in English, right? Enjoy your meal. Thanks. Okay, quite good. Uh, let me see. Good evening, good evening, everyone. It's really nice to see you here. I have Ileana and also Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan. Are you there? Hello. I'm here. Hello. Okay. Good to see you in the class. And now remember today we have some presentations, right? So we have some info to share. Actually, uh, what happened yesterday? Who wants to help me with the information related to yesterday's class? Did you have any activity to perform during the class or maybe uh, you were in charge of investigating a topic or something like that? Not really? I remember I told you to investigate about the different ways to use present perfect. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay, now did you get some info? Yo busqué, pero casi solo las mismas reglas que están aquí aparecen en todos lados. Ah, the same rule. Which ones did you get, Francisco? Uh, what? Which rules did you get? Which rules? Uh, rules, rules. Rules. Yeah. Ah, uh, la, las que vimos ayer um, era que el presente perfecto se utilizaba con un tiempo que empezaba un tiempo y se continuaba en otro tiempo o, o a veces en un tiempo no definido, que no importaba el tiempo. Uh, this, uh, no, no recuerdo las otras exactamente. Okay, so, but you remember what we said yesterday, right? Okay, great, good. Claudia, did you investigate something or did you get some extra examples? Um, no, se me olvidó la tarea. You forgot it, okay. <laughs> okay, so now, uh, Jonathan, I think Jonathan got something for the group tonight. I didn't. Oh, you didn't? No. Uh, you didn't do I, it? I didn't do the no. homework. Don't remember. You, you didn't Sorry. remember about it. Catherine, did you get something for the group? I'm sorry, teacher. Hey, what, what's happening with this, uh, with the, with this uh, uh, team? You know, we are a team. Carla, did you get something? About this. Yeah, about present perfect things. Ah, uh, present perfect. I uh, I only remember is it equal in Spanish? It's present. For uh -huh. I is uh, for you are or your And I do he or she is we. We and they are. Uh -huh. I, I only remember uh, about 
the of present perfect. Uh, okay, so let us try to remember what we studied yesterday. A uh, simple present is when you say I am, you are, he, she is, it is, but that is the, the, the present form of the verb to be. Yesterday we started something different, right? So we started about present perfect things, and there is a like a pattern to follow. Uh, I don't know, is there anybody? I, don't worry, Carlita, Carla, sorry, because we are going to uh, have some review about what we studied yesterday. Uh, is there anybody else who wants to provide extra information on person perfect things? Teacher, I found some information. Okay, yeah. Ileana, what did you get? Uh, I found that we use the present perfect when the action um, hasn't finished recently. Uh, like, for example, uh, let me see. Like, he, uh, for example, I have just received the results. Uh, okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, uh I'm sorry to interrupt, Ileana, because I, I, I have an example so that people can get it. You will continue because the, I will provide only an example, okay? Van a escribir lo que yo les diga en español, lo van a escribir en inglés. Yo he tenido este televisor durante 10 años. Type it in the chat or, or in a notebook. Quiero ver cómo escriben eso en inglés. En el chat es como más fácil porque yo lo puedo ver inmediatamente. Repeat, please. Yo he tenido chat. este televisor durante 10 años. Ok, David got it. Ok, also Miguel. Uh, uh, ok, Carla, I have had. Carla look, look, Carla, look at the David's uh, sentence. Uh, yes, Eliana yes, got yes. it. I, I have had this TV 14 years. All right. So, de acuerdo a lo que dijo Eliana, uh, analicemos la oración que yo les acabo de decir. Compré el televisor hace 10 años. Ok. Ya eso es pasado. Pero lo he tenido durante 10 años. Quiere decir que el pasado está unido al presente y posiblemente al futuro. Lo compré, lo tengo desde hace 10 años, todavía lo tengo y posiblemente lo voy a tener durante un par de años más porque todavía funciona. Ok, eso es lo que yo quiero que, que nos quede bien claro. Por eso me tomo el, me tomo el atrevimiento de pasarme al español. Ok, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Liliana, go ahead with the next info. Please activate your microphone. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was uh, also I found that we use uh, the present perfect when um, the action repeats constantly. Like for example, he has won at the first uh, place. A uh, every summer or every year. And the other one is, uh, no, actually this one we saw yesterday, the moment in which we, the, the action was, was uh, done is not relevant. I think we saw it yesterday, so I just found two. Okay, so but we got some extra info. That's what I wanted you to do, right? So the first one is it's about like uh, joining like the past with the present and, and somehow with the future, right? And the other one 
was kind of similar. It's, it's about a, a, like having a repeated action, right? That's what you said. And you mentioned the example like he's won the first uh, prize during every summer or something like that, right? Every summer, yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's a different example. That was fantastic. Thank you, Ileana. Uh, do you have uh, more info or that's it? Uh, that's it. Okay, thank you. Okay, people, I think we're going to have some review, especially about the, the, the pattern that we need to follow. Night, we are in church of uh, having like a comparison between present perfect and simple past. Okay, this is the info we studied yesterday, right? About present perfect already and yet. And something that I want you to be clear about this topic is about the pattern that we need to follow. Give me one second, because I don't remember. Hi, in this lesson. Exactly where in the video. Let me see. Now I will use this info. Ah, it's over here. This is the pattern. This is the pattern that we're going to occupy. Look. What do we need? We need a subject. Actually, over here is missing the subject, right? Plus, have or has, depending on the person, right? Plus a past participle form of a verb, plus a complement. Okay, uh, where is the subject over here in the in the sentence? This sentence, where is the subject? She has worked in a bank for five years. What is she, the subject? She is the subject. She, she is the subject. Yeah, she is the subject, okay? Vamos a ver si hacemos como un... She is the subject. Then, what do we have? Plus, plus what? Has. Has. Why do we have has and not have? Because it's third person, person. Excellent. Because it is the third person singular, right? She has. She has. Okay. And after that, what do we need, people? The birth and pass. We need a verb. In which form? Past participle. Past participle, right? Past participle. Word. It's a resource. It's a regular verb. Regular verb. Yeah, that this is regular, right? Yeah. And then what, what do we need? Complement. 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 We need a complement. And the complement in the is in the bank for five years. So if we follow this, this structure, or this pattern, so you have to be sure that you are using present perfect tense. Okay? Present perfect. So this is the way for you to identify the structure. Okay? Alguna vez, miren. Algunas veces irse a la pura gramática como que sí es, es útil, pero es más útil saberla ocupar. Pero igual, eh, les hago la aclaración de qué es lo, cuál es el patrón a seguir para que ustedes identifiquen qué es presente perfecto. Ok, en español, eh, ella ha trabajado en el banco durante cinco años. Es diferente que digamos, ella trabajó en el banco por cinco años. ¿Cuál es la diferencia? ¿Quién me dice? Eh, ella ya, aún sigue ya trabajando. Ya no continúa. La acción ya no continúa. 
En pasado, ella trabajó por cinco años, quiere decir que ella ya la despidieron mm -hmm. o ya se jubiló. Pero si decimos, she has worked in the bank for five years, quiere decir que ella empezó a trabajar en el banco hace cinco años, pero que todavía está trabajando ahí. Ok, so we're going to go over. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions, because we're going to go over like comparing simple past tense with present perfect. Now is your time. If you have, if you have any question, any doubt, this is your time. No questions? Not for me. Okay. Anybody in the group? So maybe. <clears throat> Yo sí tengo preguntas. Okay, tell me. Ask the questions, eh, please. Si la oración dice, she, she has worked in the bank for five years. Ha, ese has, traducido al español, me dice, estuvo. O ah, está, o ha yeah. estado. Excellent question. Miren, qué pregunta más eh, importante. Fíjense que si nosotros utilizamos este verbo. Give me one second, please. Give me one second. Si nosotros utilizamos este verbo. Ok. On eh, the person ok, will... sorry. Este verbo, en, en otro contexto, el verbo toma significado. Por ejemplo, if I say, I have a motorcycle. Yo tengo una motocicleta. He has a motorcycle. Él tiene una motocicleta. Ahora, eso es con presente simple. Pero en presente perfecto, have or has va a ser un auxiliar. ¿Qué significa en español? Nada. O sea, no tiene significado. Por eso es que acá digo, she has worked. Ella ha trabajado. Ajá. En el bank for five years. ¿Para qué me sirve el auxiliar? Para determinar el tiempo. Ajá. Yo ya sé que, me están, que el tiempo es presente. Perfecto. ¿Se acuerda cuando estudiaron do y does? ¿No? Sí, sí. Eh, do y das, ¿en qué tiempo lo ocupaban? En presente. En presente simple. Ah, entonces eso nos dice que es presente simple. Eh, si yo digo una oración, does she, work, does she work in a bank? ¿Qué tiempo estoy usando y qué significa? Does she work in a bank? Presente simple. Ajá. But how do you say that in, in Spanish? Does she work in a bank? Ella, Ella trabaja, trabaja en, en el banco. banco. No, that's a question. Does she work in a bank? Does she work in a bank? Ella trabaja en el banco. Trabaja ella en el banco. Ah, oigan la pregunta. Trabaja ella en el banco. Ahora, si yo quiero hacer esa pregunta eh, con un tiempo diferente, ¿cómo lo, ¿cómo lo hago? Has she worked in the bank? Has she worked? Has she worked in a bank? ¿Cómo dicen eso en español? Trabaja ella. Ella ha trabajado en el banco. Ah, ¿ha trabajado ella en un banco? Ajá. Ah, so, entonces, eso lo, perdón que me pase mucho el español, pero quiero que quede claro porque la pregunta está súper genial. ¿Le va a servir? Sí, tell me, Ileana. Entonces, como, oh, entonces Andrea, ahí sorry. confirma de que has es auxiliar porque quita el das en la pregunta. Sí. Lo reemplazo. Si ustedes se fijan, yo, yo me regresé a esta parte del video porque yo noté que en los ejemplos que ustedes estaban dando, como que no habían identificado muy bien la estructura. Entonces yo dije, bueno, vamos a hacer un repaso de cómo va estructurado el presente perfecto. Entonces, cuando me, eh, Carla me hace la pregunta de qué significa have or has, entonces ahí viene la respuesta. Un auxiliar solo nos ayuda, por eso se llama auxiliar, nos auxilia a identificar qué mensaje queremos eh, dar con respecto al tiempo 
o cuando lo escuchamos también identificamos qué es lo que nos quieren decir y en qué tiempo. ¿Ok? I don't know if I, if I could answer your question, Carlos. More or less. <laughs> More or less. All right. Um, let me see. Is I think because ah. I, I I don't I think because I think uh, that has or have meaning. <clears throat> tener. The, the thing. El, pensé que significaban el tiempo y que eso iba have or has has or have iba a tener a cambiar eh, la conjugación del verbo no eh, la conjugación del verbo siempre va a ser pasado participio okay. ah, y fíjese Carla en el, en el otro en el otro ejemplo es decir we have had o sea que tenemos dos veces el verbo have pero uno es auxiliar y el otro es verbo o sea, este sí. me está diciendo que estoy con presente perfecto y este me está confirmando que es un verbo en pasado participio. Mm. We have had the same car for 10 years. Hemos tenido el mismo auto por 10 años. Ok, so I think it will be clearer. Se va a volver más claro con, con respecto al tema que vamos a ver ahorita, que es una comparación. Ahora, vamos a comparar el pasado simple con presente perfecto. Y ahí vamos a ver cuál es el auxiliar de pasado simple y cuál es el auxiliar de, de presente perfecto. Let's go over it. Tal vez ahí terminamos de completar la idea, Carla. Y si no, pues voy a ver si encuentro algo, extra información que nos ayude a, a comprenderlo mejor. Let me see. Is ready and yet uh, this, there's a conversation. Uh, we're gonna go over with the with the conversation so that we can uh, get familiarized with with the topic that's coming. We still have like 35 minutes, okay? And do me the favor to identify present perfect statements and simple past in case we have it, okay? So let us pay attention, please. Hi everyone. A conversation will be listened to in order to practice. Can you listen to the lady? Yes. Yeah, all right. Yes, yes. Thanks. Thank you for letting me know. Here we go. This present perfect and simple past at the same time. Notice how they use both tenses during this conversation. Listen and repeat. Listen and practice. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I'm late. Have you been here long? No, only for a few minutes. Have you chosen a restaurant yet? I can't decide. Have you ever eaten Moroccan food? No, I haven't. Is it good? It's delicious. I've had it several times. Or how about Thai food? Have you ever had green curry? Actually, I have. I lived in Thailand as a teenager. I ate it a lot there. I didn't know that. How long did you live there? I lived there for two years. All right. Now I think that you can uh, notice about present perfect, right? So for in the first sentence, Peter says, I'm sorry I'm late. Have you been long here? Or have you been here long? So what, what is this tense? Present perfect. Present perfect. We have auxiliary have, we have the verb in the past participle, and then we have a complement. And that is a yes, no question. How do you answer a yes, no question? Say yes or no, right? Yes, I have, or no, I haven't. Now, Mandy says, no, only for a few minutes. Then Peter says, have you chosen a restaurant yet? What is the thing? Present perfect. Present 
present perfect again. We have auxiliary have, we have subject, we have the verb choose in the past participle form, and we have a complement. Then Mandy continues, I can't decide. Have you ever eaten Moroccan food? Again, right? Present perfect. Have eaten and complement. No, I haven't. Is it good? It's delicious. I've had it several times. Present perfect. Oh, or how about Thai food? Have you ever had a green curry? Actually, I have. Aquí viene el pasado, miren. Mm -hmm. I lived in Thailand as a teenager. I ate it a lot there. Simple past. I didn't know that. How long did you live there? I lived there for two years. All right. So in order to, to be clear with this info, I think it's, it's better if we have some some review about what's simple past and what's present perfect again. Now, uh, si ustedes, by digamos acá, I didn't know that. ¿Cómo dicen eso? En, en, en forma positiva. Vamos a ver el chat. Hacemos el chat. Veamos. Eh, comencemos con presente perfecto, mejor. Have you been here long? That's a question, right? ¿Cómo decimos que alguien ha esperado ahí por mucho tiempo en forma positiva? Can somebody type it in the chat? Can somebody help me with the, with the statement? In, I mean, in a positive, a positive statement? Instead of saying, have you been here long? Then you need to say a positive statement with the same information. No, present perfect. The same, but positive statement. Have you been here long? Oh, let me see. No, not yet. Not yet. Uh, I'm sorry, Jonathan and Mayra. No, no. Okay, look at Liliana's example. Liliana said, I have been waiting here long. Okay, that's really good. That's that's good. I mean, it's the same message, right? I have been, oh, I have waited, Liliana. Forget about being. Or I have been here long. That's that's different, right? I have been here long. I okay, that's better. Thank you, David. I I have been here long. That's a positive statement. So if you if I say a negative statement. Negative. We use a you auxiliary. Uh -huh. That's what I want Auxiliary. you to notice. About. Yeah, that's what I want you to notice about. So they say, if if you say in the native form, they say I haven't he, I haven't been here long. Yo no estaba aquí por mucho tiempo, all right? So if you want to create a a, a question, they say, um, have you been here long? Have Have you been here long? Yes, I have, or no, I haven't. So how long have you been here? Eso es diferente, mire. How long have you been here? Pero siempre vamos a ocupar el auxiliar. How long have you been here? ¿Cuál es el auxiliar con presente perfecto? Haven. Have or has. Tenemos dos formas, dependiendo del sujeto. Have or has. Pero miren con el auxiliar en pasado. What is the auxiliary for past simple? Did. Did. So, I lived in Thailand. Esa es una oración positiva. I lived in, Thali in Thailand. Sorry. Eh, ¿Cómo digo eso en, de manera negativa? In simple past. Yeah. I lived in Thailand. 
Negative form. I didn't live in Taira. Okay, I didn't live y el live ya no lleva la D, ¿se acuerdan? Porque ya tenemos yes. el auxiliar did. So esas son las diferencias. I didn't live in Thailand. Question. Interrogative form. I didn't live in Thailand. Question. What's the question? Just no question. Yes, I did. No, I mean, uh, just no question. What's, what would be like the just no question with this with the same info? Did you live in Thailand? Ah, did you live in Thailand, right? So did, did you live in Thailand? So we have the auxiliary with negative statements and interrogative statements, right? Did is the auxiliary for simple past tense, okay? And let's see. This info. Present perfect versus simple past. Now, let's take a look at this info, people, and then you will see that there is like a key for you to notice when to use simple past and when to use present perfect things. Hello to all. In this lesson, we will learn when to use present perfect versus simple past. What we are about to watch is question form in present perfect. Notice the way to answer. Present perfect versus simple past. Use the present perfect for an indefinite time in the past. Use the simple past for a specific event in the past. Have you ever eaten Moroccan food? Yes, I have. I ate it once in Paris. No, I haven't. I've never eaten it. Have you ever had green curry? Yes, I have. I tried it several years ago. No, I haven't. I've never had it. Yes, I have. I okay, now I, I think this, this is going to be a little bit clearer, right? Because present perfect can be used um, for an indefinite time in the past. And then in order for you to clarify the, uh, the specific time of the event, you use simple past, okay? And then you have like the, both examples over here. Have you ever eaten Moroccan food? Alguna vez has comido eh, comida um, Moroccan? I don't remember how to say that. Marroquí. Oh, oh, thank you, Marroquí. Have you ever, have you ever eaten Moroccan food? Yes, I have. Si ustedes se fijan, aquí hay un punto. Yes, I have or no, I haven't. Punto. Después de eso, ¿qué tiempo usa la persona? Past. Past. Simple sí, past. Simple past. Ok. So, uno es eh, para, para hablar de una actividad en un tiempo indefinido y para aclararlo cuando sucedió, vamos a usar el pasado simple. I ate it once. Una vez lo comí en París. Ya está más certero la información. Ok. It may be last year I ate it in Paris. I ate it in Paris last year. So you see, you can clarify. But, but if you say, yes, I have, I have eaten, I have eaten Moroccan food in Paris. ¿Cuándo sucedió? No lo aclaro porque no está claro porque estoy usando presente perfecto. Sé que sucedió en el pasado, pero no hay un tiempo definido. ¿Ok? No, I haven't. I've never eaten it. Have you ever had a green curry? Yes, I have. I tried it several, several years ago. Simple past. No, I haven't. I've never had it. What about if you want to use, if you wanted to use, for example, a, a negative statement? No, I haven't. And then we we use uh, we use simple past, for example. No, I haven't. Last time I you may say it like this. Last time I I went to a Moroccan food 
I saw uh, the dish, the Moreca dish, but I didn't try it. I didn't try. Okay, so then you use simple past there, and then, then you identify it. Simple past by, by having the auxiliary deal. Is there any question? Hello, hello, hello there. Is, is, is it difficult? Kind of difficult? Yes? Uh, I have a question, teacher. Um, this is you see the present perfect for an indefinite time. In and, the past. Uh, in the past. Uh, you see the simple part for a specific event in the past. And the, the question here in the field is have you ever ate Moroccan food in a specific uh, time? It's in exactly. the time. And the second is um, uh, Siento que es lo mismo. Have you ever had green curry? No especifica tiempo tampoco. Estaríamos uh -huh. hablando de que los dos presente perfect. Yeah, I mean, we have two examples about the same uh, the same information that's presented over here. As you can see, uh, the present perfect is uh, it's for an, an indefinite time in the past. It's like, have you ever eaten Moroccan food? ¿Alguna vez has comido eh, comida marroquí? Ah, entonces la persona sí, dice, sí, ya lo he hecho. Ok, pero este sí, ya lo he hecho, no nos dice cuándo fue. Entonces, por eso dice, yes, I have. Pero si usted quiere añadirle, digamos, eh, una fecha en que lo hizo, entonces usa pasado simple. I ate it once in Paris. Lo comí una vez en París. In the second one, no, I haven't. I've never eaten it. Ajá, aquí... No, no, o sea, aquí dice que no lo ha hecho, entonces no, no puede usar pasado simple acá. Por eso yo les decía en el ejemplo que yo, que yo me inventé. No, no lo he hecho. Una vez fui a, a, a un comedor marroquí, vi el plato, pero no lo quise probar. Entonces allí sí ya es pasado simple. Teacher, in the answers is the simple past, not in questions. Ya. Yeah. In the answer, you can use a simple past, right? But remember, let us, let us try to try to get a very general uh, uh, idea about, about different things, okay? Tratemos de irnos como generando una idea clara de los diferentes tiempos. No nos vayamos este, a, a, ¿cómo les digo? A, a in, ¿cómo, les digo, ¿Cómo les digo esa palabra? Tratemos de ir agarrando inglés de manera general, dependiendo de lo que nosotros queramos decir, así vamos a usar inglés. De momento estamos viendo presente perfecto, cómo se usa y algunos ejemplos de presente perfecto y pasado simple. ¿Ok? Pero acuérdense que tenemos otros tiempos, presente simple, futuro will be going to, tenemos el futuro perfecto, pasado perfecto, o sea, hay una infinidad. De, de, uh, no infinidad, pero hay muchos, muchos tiempos que hay que irlos como eh, afianzando. Cada vez. Ahorita tenemos presente perfecto. ¿Cuál sería su tarea ahorita con presente perfecto? Memorizar cuántos verbos sean posibles en pasado participio, aprenderse la estructura, aprenderse que hay oraciones positivas, negativas, que hay preguntas de sí o no, que hay preguntas abiertas. O sea, todo eso... Es suma, es sumamente importante. Además de eso, tenemos presente perfecto continuo, que ya es otra cosa. And let's see, I think, I don't know, it's sure. in, tell me, Jonathan. Una, una pregunta, en el caso del per, presente perfecto, eh, también están como los regulares y los irregulares. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You, you may say, have you ever, have you ever lived in Italy? ¿Alguna vez has vivido en Italia? Have you ever lived? Have you ever lived? That's a regular verb, right? Okay, so no matter. You can use either regular or irregular verbs. Okay. Is there any other question? No? No, teacher. Okay, thank you then. So let us try to solve the, the exercises that we have here. 
you have the knowledge check. Hey, you know, uh, this week is one of the most important weeks because you have your final test, okay? Don't forget to complete those exercises. Now, we have the knowledge check instructions. Complete these conversations, use the present perfect and the simple past of the verb given. And you have the thing. Vamos a hacer un ejercicio. ¿Cuál es, el, ¿Cuál es el pasado de sin? Tipo. Sang. Past participle. Sang. Okay. So, what is the answer over here? Have some. Have you ever some in a karaoke bar? Is the last one or the first one? The last, last one. one. Uh, okay, pretty good. Have you ever sang in a, in a karaoke bar? Karaoke bar, okay. So that's it. What is the auxiliary that we are using over here? Of. Have. Have of. is the auxiliary. Of. Ahora, vamos a, va, miren. El ejercicio solo nos dice que completemos. Vamos nosotros a hacer otra cosa. Hagan la pregunta en pasado simple. ¿Cómo la hicieran? Do you ever sing in a karaoke bar? ¿Mm? Did you, Did you sing, sing in a karaoke bar? Fantastic. Okay, so now you got it, right? And you, you need to be sure about what the message you are providing is. En esa es, ¿alguna vez has cantado en un bar de karaoke? En la otra es, ¿cantaste en el, en el karaoke bar? O sea, son dos cosas distintas. Ok. I really like the way you, you, you did it. Number two. Uh, we have the same verb. Ok. So there's no need. I think it's the same conversation, right? Yes. How do you say, uh, I mean, how do you answer um, in a, in a, in a, in a, um, in, in, I mean, a question with a present perfect form? A just no question. Yes, it, I have. Yes, I have, I have or no, I haven't, right? Yes. So over here, what is the answer? Yes, I have. I have. And what what do we have in here? What do we have in here? We have a period, right? Right. Yes, I have. Period. Aquí termina mi mi oración. Y comienza otra. ¿Qué tiempo va a ser esta oración? Past. Past. What is the answer? Last one. Okay, so now read, read everything, please. Last. Yes. I have. I saw. Yes, I have. I sang one in my birthday. Now, as you can see, on my birthday is providing like specific time in the past. All right? Number three. What is the what is the past form for this verb? Lost. Lost. What is the past participle? Lost. It's the same, right? Lose, lost, lost. Uh, we have ever over here. What, what is the, the auxiliary we use with these kind of questions, people? Did you ever or have you ever? Have you, uh, have, have you ever have you, what? Have you ever lost something valuable? Valuable, okay. Have you ever lost something valuable? Okay, thank you very much. And what about number four? No, I haven't. But my brother lost his camera on a trip once. Second one. The second one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Number five. What is the what is the past form for get? Got. 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 Past participle, 
Gotten. 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 What is the structure that we are going to use over here? Simple past or, or present perfect? Present perfect. Present perfect. What is the auxiliary we use over here? Have. 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 What is the past participle of a verb? Got. Got. So okay. the answer is first, second, or third? First one. The second one. The, the second one? This, this one? The first. First one. Oh uh, my God. It, it is the first, right? We have yes. auxiliary and past participle. Okay. I think, the, no, we have more. Yes. I have. Once I got a ticket and had to pay $50. Pretty the last good. One. So something that you need to notice is that after the, the period, uh, we're gonna get also a simple path form, right? In order to clarify how to pay 50 bucks. Number seven. Auxiliary. Have. 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 Hey, what is the path of, of this verb? So. So, so, so in the past participle, Seen. Okay, auxiliary. How? 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 How do you ever? Have you ever? Seen. Thing. A live concert? Okay. Number eight. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Okay, I. So. so. I saw. So. So. so, number one, number two, or number three? Number three. It's the third one, right? Pretty good. Number nine. Have you ever? Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, what is Have the pause of the verb be? Was, where. Was or where? What is the past participle? Been. Uh, been. Been. Firm. Okay. Pretty good. So we need auxiliary over here. Have. Have. Auxiliary have. Have you ever? Have you ever been? been? Have you late. ever been late for an important appointment? Pretty good. And I think this is the last one, right? Yeah, so we have 10 exercises. No. I haven't. I haven't. But my sister was, was 30 minutes late for her wedding. That is not weird, right? Como que no es tan, tan raro eso. En las bodas, very common. Como que las, las chicas hacen sufrir a los chicos, eso es normal. So, ever, no, ever I, forever. Yeah. No, I haven't is, but my sister is. No, I haven't, but my sister was. Or no, I haven't, but my sister. Um, no, no, I, I have. Or, was the uh, so, it's the second one. Okay, pretty good. Now, in order to finish, people, uh, para terminar. Este, van a contestar esas preguntas, pero con su propia información. Okay, for example, la primera. Have you ever, have you ever sung in a karaoke bar? Esa es la primera. Ustedes la van a contestar de acuerdo a su propia experiencia. Number two. Have you ever uh, something valuable? Tell us about your experience. Ok, empiezo a trabajar porque mañana les voy a preguntar de esto y nos van a contar cómo fue la experiencia. Ok, algo que de verdad es de, de mucho valor, lo perdieron, cómo fue, nos lo cuentan mañana. Okay, no solo me van a decir una oracióncita hoy, sino que cuéntenos la experiencia completa. The other one is, have you ever gotten, have you ever gotten a traffic ticket? Ok. Have you ever gotten a traffic ticket? ¿Le han puesto alguna vez alguna multa en el tráfico? Cuéntenoslo a mañana. Y mañana se quejan si quieren de, de, de lo que pasó. <ríe> ok. Eh, vamos a hacer un poquito de catarsis también en inglés. Eh, have, you ever, have you ever seen a live concert? También nos lo cuentan. Si, si han estado... En, en un concierto en vivo, cuéntenoslo, cómo fue la experiencia y si no lo han hecho, también cuéntenlo, cuéntenoslo por qué no, no han decidido ir a ver uno. O sea, la, la, 
La intención es que ustedes hablen, que, que practiquen inglés. And the other one, have you ever, have you ever been late for an important appointment? Creo que esto a todos nos ha pasado. A una cita importantísima que usted no podía llegar tarde y de repente pues pasa algo y no pudimos cumplir con, con la hora establecida. Cuéntenos la, la historia también. Ok. So, do me the favor to start working on that. Meanwhile, I check the list of tenants, people. Tra empiecen a trabajar en eso, por favor, mientras yo paso la, la asistencia. ¿Les parece? Yes. All right. Pretty good. Sorry. Ok. Adriana Gretel. I saw Gretel in the in the class, people. I don't know if it was today, but remember I saw her. Okay, Gretel is not here. Esmeralda. Here. Claudia Jocelyn. Present. David Alonso. Present. Francisco. Present teacher. Ok, Gabriela Guadalupe. Glendy Elisette. Here. Eh, Ileana Beatriz. I'm here teacher. Irving Hiroki. I'm here. Eh, Jennifer Raquel Jennifer Raquel Jonathan Vladimir Present Josué Miguel Present Carla Tatiana Present Catherine Jasmin Present eh, Luisa Ariana Present Mayra Patricia. Present. Nerling. Hello, present teacher. Hello there. Eh, Jancy. Jancy Jamilet. Okay. So people uh, didn't answer tonight. Eh, once again, Adriana Gretel. Gabriela Guadalupe. And Jennifer Raquel. En Jansi Chamilet. Ok, cut the list of tenants. So, for tomorrow, eh, remember, for tomorrow, you are going to share those experiences, right? Mañana van a, a compartir con nosotros las experiencias que, pues, que se les solicitan allí en ese ejercicio. Si no, si, si no quieren compartir algo, o sea, algo que, porque quizás, digamos, yo nunca he ido a un concierto en vivo. En realidad yo nunca he ido. Entonces yo, realmente yo me inventaría otra cosa. Yo empezaría a hablar de otra cosa, pero siempre usando presente perfecto. ¿Ok? Y lo mismo les sugiero a ustedes, que el día de mañana, cuando yo empiece a pedir esta participación, que todos lo hagan y que traten de extenderse utilizando el, el, la estructura que hemos venido estudiando. En el caso, quiero que identifiquen también cosas de básico, presente, que usen si quieren presente simple, que usen pasado simple, que usen presente perfecto. Eh, ¿Qué otra cosa han estudiado? Teacher. Tell me, Carla. Eh, no puede dar. No puede escribir todos los tiempos en inglés. El nombre. 
Ah, ok. The, the, the ones that I want you to talk about tomorrow, con los que quieren que, con los que les estoy solicitando ahorita. No, todos. Todo, no, pero todo. en el grupo de WhatsApp. Ah, ok. El nombre okay. de todos los tiempos. Ok. I, I will look for an image and then I will share it with you there. Eso okay. les puede ayudar a que ustedes empiecen a investigar también por sí mismos, porque acuérdense que Después de intermedio se van a ir a upper intermedio, que ya va a ser llegando a, a avanzado. Y de ahí a avanzado. Y a, por ahí van a ir encontrándose esos tiempos. Es que yo siento que... No le voy a ser franca. Yo nunca, <risa> eh, en parte ha sido por aten ser atenida en el momento que estuve trabajando, no haberme pagado un, un curso de inglés. Ok. Eh, pero yo siento que eh, estoy demasiado sobreentrenada <risa> en, en sí. el curso eh, en básico. Entonces, a veces yo me pregunto, ¿y cuántos tiempos son? El nombre de esos tiempos, yo no sé. Pues porque nunca me lo pagué, ¿verdad? No, pero está bien la pregunta, Carla. ¿Saben por qué está súper genial? Porque sí, yo por sí. la información que es gratis, que está en internet. <risa> por sí. Esa no. es mi pregunta. Y aparte de eso, aparte de eso, este, ustedes no se quedan solo con la clase sino que se quedan con eso, bueno, ya hay más tiempo. Y quizás me pongo a investigar y me pongo a aprender más vocabulario. De tal manera que cuando lleguen a Upper Intermediate, como les decía, o cuando ya lleguen a Avanzado, ya ustedes tengan una idea como más, eh, como más clara de qué es lo que les va a enseñar el maestro o la maestra que tengan en su momento. Yo no los estoy entrenando en el idioma solo para este curso. O sea, yo les estoy diciendo el camino, porque esta es nuestra última semana acá, pero ya luego se van a tener otros teachers y ellos van a tener otro estilo de enseñanza o a lo mejor parecido a como yo enseño, pero ustedes tienen que ir preparados, eh, tener ideas claras de qué es lo que se les puede venir. ¿Ok? Oh, let me see. It's time. Listen, chicos, este... Voy a, voy a descargar una imagen por acá y se la voy a compartir en el grupo para que ustedes vean algunos, porque creo que hay algunos otros, pero por lo menos acá hay varios. Y nos quedamos pendientes con la presentación de mañana. ¿Les parece? Yes. Ok, so let's see tomorrow. Let's see, see you tomorrow. Okay. Good, good night. night. Tomorrow, see you. Good, good night. night. Good night. Okay. Good night. Good, good to see you. It was, it was my pleasure.